Hi, my name is Paul Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project and I am here with Henk Urian near Schiphol Airport at his secret lab and he's going to run us through a couple of uh, changes that have been done to the Vega experiment and these will be part of the journey towards doing some exciting replications and also some new experiments that he's done uh, that we can talk about in the coming months. Henk, show us through your current system we have here. Where do we start, Pop? I don't uh, know, try with the pumps. What's happened with the pumps? The pumps. Uh, this is the old pump um, for the standard, uh, you can say, fast pumping of the vacuum. Like a roughing pump, yeah? A roughing pump. Um, and that's now running. Um, and then we have added a diaphragm pump to the system. What's special about that? There is no oil involved, so when the gas is taken out of the the tank, mm -hmm. there is no oil. These oil, the, these these rotary pumps have oil in the system. Mm -hmm. With this pump, we can get the gas in um, in a bottle. Ah, so you're actually using this to extract gas that might be right. potentially synthesized in the reactor, yes, right? Yes, exactly, and then I catch it in a bottle like this. So this is a real test run. It okay. has been there for a few hours to get the vacuum gas of say two uh, millibar in this atmospheric pressure, getting the water out of the bottle. Okay, so you're filling up with water and you're I've, putting it upside down. I put down. it on the side, of, put yeah. it on, set yeah. down, put it on this, in this frame, mm -hmm. and then the... Bubble in the bu it. It's bubbling in it, the water, is, uh, the, the water is going out, then under the water I close okay. the gap, so there is a little bit water inside, but this so, is the gas coming out of the tank. So hopefully we're going to be able to take that to America at some point. Yes. And we're going to put that under the mass spectrometer by putting a, a gland on top, put a bit of silicon on top and seal it and punch a uh, syringe through there. And hopefully see if there's any interesting gases produced. That's the point. Yes. So that's uh, one potential test that we'll be doing. So you've got three samples there for me, have you? Exactly. Okay. And then what else is going on? So you've now got this gas manifold, which we saw before, but it's wired differently because it's going to a new pressure sensor. So there was a problem with this uh, old pressure sensor here, right? Yeah, this is Pirani uh, kind of um, technology. that works fine with air, but when you have uh, hydrogen or, n uh, or helium, uh, it doesn't measure the right pressure. And that is in the system very often. So you don't know what pressure you measure and then you need a diaphragm um, Okay, so this is gauge. a new one. And that is a very accurate, accurate device that measures the true pressure. So now we have feedback and uh, it's measured in TOR on the multimeter. Now it's reading 5.978 TOR. So 5.98 tor is very accurate actually to in this kind of experiments. I also want to thank at this point Charles for helping support the purchase of this unit. Absolutely. It makes a huge difference when you have this kind of equipment uh, that actually can tell you the pressure. <laughs> exactly. Right, okay. So how is this tank configured? Um, You've actually configured it so you can touch most of the tank, right? Can you, yeah, can you demonstrate yeah, that? Don't not, fry not on me. All right, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can take this off and we can make sparks. That's, Let's that's, not do that. that. That can be fun. I yeah. mean, uh, sometimes. Uh, there is two... I, I made two uh, windows in it. The one on the, on the front. Okay, so, so actually it's, uh, there's stuff going on in there at the moment. Exactly. You can see down the, there. It's not, not at a pressure that shows the spots on there, which we can see on another the, video. The, it's probably another little leak in the vacuum. Yeah, so you've Again. got one and you've currently got a little halogen dichroic or something there yeah, to, to, to switch light the tank. And yeah, and yeah so now you can see inside. Sometimes yeah. you want to see inside. Yeah. And have a different view on what's happening. 
You can use it as a viewport as well. Sometimes happen, something's happening on the other side. So your pass-through there, uh, that looks familiar. Is that something to do with a farming technology? Uh, yes. This, um, how do you call these, electric fences. Mm -hmm. And that was, that is ceramic. Mm -hmm. And that you need, otherwise you have this, you need a, a, a good ceramic because the high potential is there at maybe two, sometimes 2,000 volts. Mm -hmm. So you get the flash through breakthrough in this so you need a good insulator mm -hmm. uh, that has a hole in it to get the anode through because it's this whole this is a piece of uh, how do you call it uh, threaded wire mm -hmm. to put on the anode on one side and to put on the the lead on the other side now you have got a better sealing method here, we saw before, but it is causing some problems, right? It is causing problems. So we need to kind of go to a better solution uh, to make things a little yes. bit more predictable. Uh, maybe some com flat with some copper rings. And Tony Yavoni said he might be able to laser cut the top copper ring so we can cut the cost down there. Um, but we do need to have a large com flat type seal on there. Because at the moment you're using rubber and silicon, but you actually tried some copper wire on this and it seemed to have worked because uh, we couldn't get it working yesterday right so yeah. what, did, what did you do you made your own sort of ceiling <laughs> ring didn't you yes yes uh, we were talking about this is the rubber ring that's been used but you can yeah. maybe already see it it is flat so mm -hmm. or I have to go back to the rubber rings and have a lot of them and use them every time again mm -hmm. new a new one okay yeah uh, but uh, we were talking about copper and I think, well, <laughs> I've got no, enough copper wire, so let's try to make one. Yeah. And it's in here, one, one like these. Yeah. And it seems to work and it to, seems to a to degree. Work. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but vacuum is, uh, is pain in the ass, you can say. <laughs> so one it took me say. so much time uh, to get the tank open again mm -hmm. and try to find out, pressurize it and so on and so forth and then sometimes you don't know where it's coming from but you have to redo things again it takes a hell lot of the time yeah but okay that's part of uh, the journey and also uh, you have the power supplier which we've discussed in the past with the variac and the microwave transformers and Nothing, yeah. there's a bunch of capacitors under there in that box right yeah not not functional right now yeah uh, but Yes, that um, will be part of um, future experiments again. Yes. And we want to instrument it with the T7 Pro so we can parameterize and record full experiments. But uh, we have an announcement to make. We are going to replicate what? <laughs> the Vega Valley. We're going to replicate the Vega Valley because yeah. I'd like to write a paper with Henk. Uh, to give the full credit to what has been learnt out of that experiment. Yes. And I think it would be valuable to have a replication which is detailed in uh, what needs to be done so that it can be followed. Uh, we don't want to be one of those people that produce a paper that can't be replicated even by the claimants. Yes. Uh, so hopefully uh, it's later this year. We, we, will, we will get you the drawings and to replicate it yourself. Yeah. So. This, this will become a way, in my view, of exploring the nature of ball lightning and potentially even fluidized electrons uh, in a way that is fully described and replicated. So uh, thank you very much, Henk, for walking us through the updates to your system and the plans for later in the year. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for hosting me. And I thank you for all the assistance because we're learning together. That's the whole journey, I think. Thank you for everyone that supports uh, exactly. the work uh, of Hank. And again, thank you to Charles for the component that has made a big difference to recent experiments. See you in the next video.